Hi folks and welcome to the Business and Economics News Summary for this week. Uh, in the news this week we're going to look at um, some changes in the big four for grocery sales. We're going to look at a case study of a business that is committing uh, to social enterprise rather than for profit aims um, and we've got a roundup of UK economic performance indicators but first Obviously, a lot has been in the news recently about energy prices, um, rising cost of gas, the impact that this is having on the price of electricity as well. And we're now starting to see the impact that this might have on not just companies that rely on it for day to day energy use, but also um, those who are selling products that rely on it heavily. In this case, the electric car market. Um, headline here that soaring energy costs could threaten the future of electric cars. As electricity prices are rising, people are maybe reconsidering um, whether they want to invest or you know, consume an electric vehicle that's going to have higher running costs in the future um, than might possibly have done. Um, this is a, a big external impact on that industry. Previously, it had some great news with the, the um, European Union and the UK committing to going fully electric vehicle, no fossil fuel vehicle sales um, by the year 2030. Um, but this is something where you know, if the trend continues, um, there could be a knock-on effect onto um, the investment. We might not see the facilities being made that can now produce these cars. That will have a knock-on effect onto the volumes being produced, the prices they're produced at, um, and uh, could um, delay heading to net zero. On a more positive note, um, in terms of climate change, there is a company um, called Patagonia. They produce outdoor equipment. Um, and they've always had an environmental focus, but this week um, the owners uh, have announced that they are going to um, donate the company and change its aim. So it's entirely focused on working on solving the climate emergency. You'll see a lot of firms at the moment saying that they're doing things that are environmentally friendly. There could be an element of greenwashing there using the environment as a marketing tool. For Patagonia, uh, the owners have donated the firm and they've put it into a trust and the profits of that trust, yeah, they um, the profits of that trust will all go back to helping the environment. So this is you know, a proper true social enterprise that we're looking at here. In the UK retail market for groceries, we've long had a big four um, that's been made up of Asda, Tesco, Sainsbury's and Morrison's. That big four has either now become a big five or the makeup of it has changed because um, Audi has now officially overtaken Morrison's in, in terms of value uh, of sales. Over the summer, they've seen quite a large rise in their market share and they now have 9.3% of the market compared to Morrison's 9.1%. Uh, this is down to the changing trends and tastes. Um, Audi are not actually the fastest growing in terms of sales. That's Lidl, another discount retailer. Uh, but it's been showing how over the summer, people have been, um, with, with rising inflation, people have been uh, feeling the pinch or looking ahead and saying, right, what can we do to tighten our belts? Where can we change our habits? And increasingly, they've been going more to these discount retailers. It's worth noting that um, 15 years ago, both of these retailers, Audi and Lidl, had barely any presence in the UK market at all. Um, so they have come in and filled a niche of a very low cost discount retailer um, and have seen um, amazing market growth, have really disrupted that sector and forced some of the larger firms, um, you know, as the, even Sainsbury's, to, um, to, to start changing their offering to, to cater for customers that want a lower cost option. In economic terms, it can be worth comparing the supermarket industry as an oligopoly uh, to the petrol industry or petrol retail industry that we looked at last week in terms of you know, the, the difference it can make in um, not having homogenous goods, in, in actually having you know, different goods available. The supermarket sector is seen to be very competitive, um, whereas the petrol industry, as we saw last week, kind of suffers from uh, sticky prices on the way down and is not so price competitive. And finally for today, a quick roundup of some of the UK economic data that's come out this week. 
the unemployment rate has fallen um, down to 3.6%, but unemployment levels have actually only risen slightly. A lot of the gap is coming down to people leaving the labour market, um, either through retirement or increasingly due to long-term ill health. There's also been some data published about the relative rates of pay growth. Private sector pay growth is around 6% year on year at the moment, whereas the public sector pay growth is only 2% and, and this is in um, nominal terms rather than real. What we what this might lead to is you know, in a very tight labour market, 3.6% unemployment is the is the lowest we've seen it. In a tight labour market, it could be that public sector workers, where there are already high levels of vacancies, are going to be um, seeking work in the private sector. So this could have a big knock-on impact um, onto public services. As I said, they're already struggling to fill vacancies. It may be that more funding is needed into those areas. So, you know, for example, the, the police force, healthcare um, and education and councils. UK inflation has actually dropped slightly over the last month. It's come down from um, above 10% down to 9.9%. A lot of that has come about from the fall in petrol prices. Um, which makes up quite a large chunk of the basket. Although, as we looked at last week, maybe that fall isn't as great as it could have been um, and something for the Competition Commission to have a look into. Although that might sound encouraging, UK's core inflation, which is on you know, kind of the necessities um, like food prices, um, has actually risen. Um, food price rises um, are, are up to a 14 year high, um, driven by increases in the cost of dairy. When the Monetary Policy Committee comes to look at the inflation figures, core inflation is something they pay a lot of attention to. And if they see that that's still rising, even though overall inflation is lo uh, lowering, we may see um, that we still have quite a large increase in interest rates. We're talking about a 0.5 basis points increase that will be brought in later in the week. That decision is on Thursday. The government has also announced that it will have a fiscal event or a mini budget on Friday. So next weekend, it's likely that we will have a lot of government policies and interest rate change to talk about. We might have more details on uh, fuel price, um, energy price help for businesses. In overall terms, the UK economy is growing more slowly than expected. It's pretty much accepted now that we are going to end up in a recession. Um, we're just waiting for that to be confirmed kind of with, with September's data. Monday is a bank holiday. Bank holidays typically bring a decline in economic activity. So it's quite possible that extra bank holiday will be the thing that finally officially tips us into a technical recession. I hope you found this useful guys. If you have, please subscribe um, so you know when there's new videos up, uh, click the like button and I will see you for the news next week.